Welcome to the Truth Seeker Podcast. We're back, hanging out, live stream. Yep. Everybody, if you're listening, uh, make a comment. Let us know if everything sounds good, looks yeah. good. Yeah, let us know if we got to set up right. The uh, back end stuff is pretty crazy. You don't really test it, but yeah, we're recording. We're yeah. recording either way. <laughs> so, yeah, well, we wanted to... Uh, go live and do a hangout and talk about what we got going on. Uh, we got the retreat going on, obviously. And not, I guess it's not obvious for people who don't know. Yeah, we, we're we online a lot, but not in the public eye as much. Like, we're behind the scenes a lot with our Sears school, and we don't go do live streams very often, so we got to keep the people informed. Yeah. Okay, so I do see the chat there. Me too. They said looking and sounding good. Great. Boom. Let me take that off because that was going to cover you up. <laughs> well, we can still see the chat, though. So, yeah, we'll be answering questions. Just, uh, I mean, hanging out, whatever people want to talk about. Um, yeah. We got a lot of good comments in the last, uh, since the last podcast. Yeah. So. We had a lot of video clips that we put out from it. Mm -hmm. And some of those, it's kind of funny because some of them, it's kind of hard to tell what we're talking about without the context, but it grabs people and makes them watch the whole thing yeah. so yeah it's cool though because you get a lot of new people to the channel and stream and stuff and then um but they don't have context yeah i guess like at the end of it we should add like if you want to watch the full video it's in the description or something but yeah it's so weird that little things like even adding that would mess up the ret retention mm -hmm. to take them off the platform and they know you're promoting something different. So, you know. Yeah. We were talking recently about like the old days of radio shows and the very beginnings of the, the podcasting era when you were doing it back then. And there were no algorithms. You just did your thing and put it out there. And now it's got to have a certain thumbnail and it's got to have tags and it's got to have no outside links. And there's this whole game you have to play to get people to see your content. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was still some games you had to play back then. Yeah. But, like, not everybody had Photoshop. And to, to you know, create really cool, engaging thumbnails yeah. was uh, was hard. Yeah. But now it's, like, amazing, mm -hmm. amazing thumbnails. And, like, they're just a dime a dozen. And mm -hmm. you got to have a bunch of stuff that goes along with it. So, mm -hmm. the technical side. You can't, you, you can't just create. Yeah. That's what sucks. Yeah. So. Even I posted a couple clips recently that didn't do so great. And our guy that helps us on the back end was like, you should probably make thumbnails for those. And I was like, oh, I'm not the best at thumbnails. I remember talking to uh, Seven, the Christian rapper, years ago. And uh, we were talking and he's like, man, I don't even get on social media i don't even pay attention i don't even know how many numbers we're doing on our music videos he's like we shoot the videos i forget about it and i was like man that must be nice right he's like yeah we got a we have a team for that we have like a video guy and a recording guy and an engineer guy and a graphic art guy we got an album cover guy i'm like hey man give me some of your guys info because like i need a guy because mm -hmm. i'm the guy yeah you're you know? everything it's like the whole thing about like writing a song or releasing a song is like the whole process that goes behind it. You have to like go on a campaign to do anything, mm -hmm. you know, and especially, you know, doing it all yourself, independent and shooting a music video and recording, mixing, mastering. Yeah. And then if you're, own, you're, you're your own biggest critic, it don't get released. Right. So it takes a lot longer to get something out. But you just got to to hang on the words when you do release something and it touches so many people like that's what you need to hold on to that if you keep striving for perfection or some some unattainable goal like of course you want it to sound great but at some point you've got to put it out or no one's ever going to be able to be touched by it mm. yeah it's like this too what we're doing I think we were putting it off for a while just because the setup, we still don't have the setup down where it's just easy and push a button and go. It mm -hmm. actually takes hours to get all this stuff set up and yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there was a, a bunch of questions and comments and stuff on all the videos. Like 
What what were some of them? Like let, let's talk about the um the 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 comments from the, the helicopter video. Oh my gosh. <laughs> First like somebody said of course in this day and age it happens and there's no video. Well, you wake up out of a dead sleep, you're in a tent and there's a helicopter right above your head spraying chemicals on you. Your first thought is not going to be to grab the phone. It's going to be to get the heck out of there. Yeah. You don't want to keep breathing the chemicals and stand there filming it like. Yeah. You want to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is, like we were talking about, like, because I'm reading, I was like, yeah, video would have been nice. But a video wouldn't suffice either. Mm -mm. You know, because it's like, oh, well, because we did get a video. Mm -hmm. There was like, it was so funny, like, we you know woke up it's it was like six or something and uh the helicopter was above us and spraying chemicals on us and all this stuff and then somebody grabbed the phone i don't know if it was me or anthony i think it might have been me but whoever grabbed the phone and started filming literally there was like two seconds of footage before the phone went dead because we were camping and we didn't put our phones on the charger. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to like get our stuff and like panicking, like don't breathe it in, don't breathe it in. But then pulling the phone out filming. And yeah, we were yelling profanities, you know, Adam, what the hell are you doing kind of thing. And yeah, but uh, I mean, even so, like that's not, I mean, putting two and two together as far as like, what would the, that prove? It proved that there was a, a dude you know, being silly and spraying, you know, the crops in the area. And then he was supposed to spray that area and was messing with us. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, it, you know, that, you know, the, the video and the story for me, it like the connection there is the what we did the night before, which yeah. was tap into the CE5, you know, and then the next morning, this helicopter shows up spraying us. Right. right. I don't need I don't, I'm not even saying for a fact that it's connected. You know, maybe not. Maybe it was just some dude who was, you know, didn't want to be there and was like, I'm gonna have fun with these hippies. Yeah. But um, anyway, the the comments on there were funny because people are like, they're like, yeah, you guys say, say you were praying and meditating. You left out the mushroom part. You know, yeah. you guys were on acid. That was some good acid. Good weed you were smoking. Yeah, it was like an overwhelming amount of drug comments and um, and gun comments too. Right. Yeah, that's something that stood out as very strange. Yeah. People telling you, you should have been packing, bro. You should have got your pistol out. Like, you're bringing a pistol to a helicopter fight? <laughs> I yeah. don't know, man. Yeah, and I don't know. It's a, but, I mean, it was it was fun to tell the story. <laughs> it was fun for our, our video editor to to chop it up mm -hmm. and uh, and make a little real out of it that went viral I, I would say viral anything that does over you know a thousand views now i think it's almost up to like 150k now 150,000. It, it was 140 on something so when crazy. i looked yeah but uh no our video editor's pretty good we're building our it's team. really good shout out to the homie malenko yeah yeah he's awesome uh what were some other comments whether it was on that video or some of the other because there's a bunch of weird comments lately well there's always those people who are just mean and they'll just say like oh, yeah f you this is stupid or call me dip weed or dip i don't know yeah yeah just just name calling and middle school bully stuff like okay i thought we were grown-ups here but maybe not <laughs> i don't know yeah but uh al but, al loves them yeah algorithm yep cuss oh. me out Tell me, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> and what's good is like, we're all talking about the crazy and bad comments, but there's always good ones too. And mm -hmm. the bad ones are just louder because they sting a little bit. But the good ones, like anybody who leaves a good comment on our videos or gives it a like or something positive, interacts in a positive way, like it means the world. Mm -hmm. It's encouraging. Yeah, it's attention. So. Either way, you know, and, uh, yeah, the the good the good comments are awesome. Yeah. We should, you know, but you know, I don't want to I feel weird about that, you know, sharing your good comments. I was thinking about that earlier. Like cuz we save our good comments. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Sean. I see Sean in the chat. Uh 
Sean's given more than enough good oh yeah testimonies like while we're doing our Thursday night and Sunday morning like how much you know our work and the school and stuff means to him this atmosphere that we've created but like and it means so much to, to us but I it just feels weird to go around and be like yeah Sean said we're changing lives <laughs> you know yeah you know check out all these comments I saved Th- those are for me mm-hmm. you know those are for us like when we fall upon I guess no I guess we're not having an impact I guess we're not you know right. getting through to anybody because of the loud comments hang it up you guys are false prophets you about whatever you should read the bible you know I do read the bible yeah. like for hours and hours a day probably more than your pastor well you you just don't understand it it's like you're never good enough but you know the loud ones you know when struggling with identity sometimes you believe it it's like well maybe yeah. they're true because you should you know like be open to the criticism yeah because you know what if your your, your haters are going to show you a side that your you know friends aren't going to say mm-hmm. they're not going to tell you you know where you're slipping and missing up you know um so you all i, I you do want to consider it you know healthy criticism but that meme that I posted from that philosopher or whatever was like, do you remember what it said? It was like, um, it was something about when you receive hate or b- bad comments or something, when it's true, then you can change it. And when it's not true, laugh at it. Yeah. Just like, let it go. Yeah. How many drugs was you guys on? <laughs> Man, I, I remember the good acid back in 87. We had good <laughs> acid in Colorado, man. Yeah. A bunch of them like, no, no acid on this one. That's a different podcast, sir. Not this yeah. one. It was funny, too, because I, I, I would make sure, you know, that when we went out to make contact, because we took it serious, you know, we and went out with a bunch of friends and stuff and who were interested and in that I told them, you know, they couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. No beer, no weed, no nothing. They're like, oh, man, I smoke out. Nah, man, because... You can have an experience and then, explain you know, it away. be able to explain it away. Or the naysayers are like, okay, was you guys smoking though? Yeah, we did smoke a little weed. Not a lot though, you know. Mm-hmm. So I always wanted to make sure that, you know, none of that was going on at uh, those CE5s and stuff. Yeah. That's probably the comments that, I won't say upsets me because that's not the right word. But the ones I really don't like the most is the ones that accuse us of being like dr- on drugs or drug addicts. Guys smoking or, crack. Like, no, we don't even drink alcohol anymore. Or smoke cigarettes. Like, we're we're straight laced. Like, and we're not straight a lot edge. of not a lot of people can say that or do say that mm. by choice or otherwise. I don't know. It just I don't. Well, that, that's the ones you laugh at, though. Right. The guy's got to be smoking crack. But it also, like, it adds to the beauty or the profoundness of a of an encounter or an experience. Because they're like, there's no way that's real. You had to be on drugs. You had to be. Yeah. You know, it's like, no. Like, mm-mm. No drugs, sir. Yeah, because maybe that's the only way they've seen supernatural or... Other world, like yeah, something that things was they can't explain outside of the norm. Was yeah. on drugs or something like that. Because drugs will pull the veil back, like it, it will. You yeah, know, there's allow a time and place in. for everything, for sure. So. There's a time and place for it all, so it's not like to knock that, but you don't want to, you know, be able to point. You got to point to where it came from and tell the truth, you mm-hmm. know. And that's that's a big thing with the scriptures too, of people like. You know, talking about, like, these encounters, the burning bush was really DMT. And, you know, it just doesn't say it. It's like, you know, or the the sacrament, you know, the um, um, communion, the mm-hmm. bread and, and wine and stuff was really magic mushrooms. Or the manna was magic mushrooms and stuff like that. Like, you know, these profound encounters. Oh, yeah, they were just all tripping on, on something kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's okay to ask those questions and investigate it. Yeah, because what if they were? <laughs> yeah, what if it was? But the burning bush, too, like, I think 
that word that we like so much, the Como Rebi, the sunlight shining through the trees, mm -hmm. and it makes you feel calm and inspired, and it's just such a beautiful word. I think it's a Japanese word, and to me, I'm, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if that's what the burning bush was. Mm -hmm. Like some kind of bright sunlight or mm -hmm. something shining through. No, it, yeah. When I was having one of my early morning writings about that, I uh, I was reading about it and was writing, and I added that in there just because it's like when the sunlight passes by, it it activates it. You know, mm -hmm. it's interesting to think about that how the sunlight does that, but also how water does it too. So like when water would you know, reflect off of something or activate the memory and they would pour water on statues and um, you see the reflecting pools at all of the major temples, including the temples in, in, in the U.S. The, yeah. the uh, what is it, the Congress building or Capitol? Capitol and the... Uh, yeah, those big ritual hmm. epicenters of the world, yeah. But yeah, the sunlight activating it and then I guess what is above and below but then the, the water activating the memory usually specifically a, a memory of something that happened it would rain or pour wine or um water it's so something. cool how water holds memory and and your words affect water and its makeup yeah it makes a lot of sense why they put those pools at temples and monuments and things because people are go there and they're touched and they're inspired and Maybe that water retains some of that memory and that experience. Yeah. Yeah, it's all, it says all waters and um, rivers uh, sitting next to a river. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more, though, like of just er everything holds memory. Like your body stores memory from trauma and past experiences, music, like... You know how we talk about music being like a almost like a time portal because mm -hmm. you can hear it and it just translates you back to a another time. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things that like embed memories and it takes the trigger in our lives. And we talked about smells. We talked about that a lot on some of the last ones we've done. But smelling something mm -hmm. that reminds you a bunch of different things with the the senses. And it's set up that way for a reason, you know. We took and then um, the senses in the in the scriptures, not senses, but um, sensual. Such things are demonic, yeah. sensual even. So weird, like diving into that scripture and getting the the revelation on it that it is the smell that is here, but it permeates and you know taps into a whole nother reality or mm -hmm. memories yeah you can totally see and and if you really believe as above so below like everything here reflects in the heavens and the heavenly realms and sense and t feelings and all of that is a big part of it and we've been taught to just squash those and not listen to it that it's evil yeah demonic then, <laughs> then we're locked out of the beauty of it yeah yeah, we're all locked out until we're not. Such is the kingdom, you know. This whole there was a there was a comment uh, somebody said. I don't even think it was on. Or well, I think people were arguing on one of the videos or something. Like, if God loved us, then why would He leave us here and hide Himself and you know abandon us or kind of thing? And it's interesting to to see it like that. But it's like, you know, you look at it in the sense that He didn't like. You can see. Like, it's it's you that can't see. Mm -hmm. It's not God. It's not church. It's not religion that has blinded you because once you see, you can't unsee. So, like, it's there's something... It says more about us, the, 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 the seer, um, the person that's observing, that you look at, you know, injustice and you're not moved to compassion. You look at somebody helping somebody and it doesn't warm your heart you know you look at um, nature and don't see god's hand moving in cycles and you know rebirth and reincarnation and um, all of this stuff eternal life you know of experiencing that you can't see it until you can mm -hmm. and then you 
um, are led in to see something more, you know, profound or or beautiful. Um, it's all there. The 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 kingdom that is hidden is revealed to everyone when they when they're ready to see it. And the funny thing is that it's always been here, like under our noses and nonchalant, just operating, you know, without you worried about it. You're too worried about bills or worried about, you know, other things of this world Mm -hmm. that you're not you don't care about the kingdom. And uh, so much so that we become so familiar with the natural world that we remove all of its spiritual principles from it and say that, well, the king, the kingdom stuff is uh you know, the kingdom of heaven that's here is um, invisible that we'll never see it and it's somewhere else or something. Yeah. And it's here the whole time operating. It's like, yeah, good. You'll never see it, right? So now I can operate without, without True Seeker pulling out a camera trying to film, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the natural processes of angels and spirits and Jesus and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But it starts here. Like, you, you're locked out of that. And then you start believing that, you know, God in the form of Christ can come and live within you and make changes within you. And so God can inhabit something that's earthly, that's from the earth. And then you start looking around and say, oh, well, maybe he's inhabiting other things. Maybe he's at work here and we're just not paying close enough attention. It's interesting. That's the way it seems to work. Um, yeah, we we don't have any agenda really. Just hanging out and opening up for questions or comments or just whatever. Talk about the Bible. Yeah. Keep us on track. We have any questions? Um, I saw one. Someone was asking about advice on setting up a website, um, but that could go so many ways. There's no way to really answer that. <laughs> on a live stream but um we do have a lot of materials and things um on seer.school and we're getting ready i don't know when exactly but soon to do the path of the healer which tells you how to do all that stuff how to build a site and um you know get a following all the technical stuff yeah all the technical stuff that you need to know well all the stuff really (laughs) including the technical stuff so um, follow us and join the email list and you can hear more about that and, and it'll literally like step by step tell you how to do that. Um, do you see that? Resonate? Yes. Yeah, because I don't really, some of the comments are cut off for me. Okay. Okay. It says, ain't the Bible copied from the ancient Sumerian clay tablets? Ain't it though? So yeah. <laughs> I just listened to... The audiobook of the Epic of Gilgamesh for the first time. Not this just week. the audiobook. You have the physical too. Yeah, I just can't I can't follow audiobooks that well. I need something visual, so it's easier for me if we, we listen together if I have the book and I can like follow along with the book. Because sometimes you need to see how <laughs> things are spelled and like context and Can I throw you under the bus? I guess. <laughs> we go to the gym and a lot of times at the gym <laughs> is when we uh consume our audiobooks at the gym yard work and traveling is when we consume a lot of audiobooks sometimes we'll switch up our bible study and read other books in the morning and audiobooks are part of it but um i I can i can do both at the same time and i'm already (laughs) awkward at the gym i just like to go in there and get myself done and get out and and I hear something, you know, and we're listening to the audio book and we both have an earbud in and Aaron, <laughs> Aaron, to hear something deep and she'll just stand there just like listening and imagining it. And like, it's got her, like it's something good because it usually is because we're listening together. But she's just like staring. I'm like, Aaron, Aaron, like just work out and get out of here. You're just standing there staring off. She's like, well, I can't, I can't do both. I can't listen and focus on what I'm listening to and work out. Yeah, it's strange. Like, I'll hear something that interests me and my mind will go off on 20 different tangents about different things. (laughs) My mind does that, but it's mid-conversation. I probably look like a crazy person just standing in the gym going. Download from the Lord. (laughs) What if Finkel is Einhorn? Yeah, I'm just messing with you. 
It's true, though. I know, because sometimes I'll snap back and I'll see myself in the mirror. I'm like, oh, God, how long have I been standing here just staring? Yeah. But well, go ahead. Uh, reading Gilgamesh uh, about the Bible and Sumer copied from Cl Sumerian clay tablets and stuff. So I've always heard people say that it was like the similar story. The flood story is in there. But you don't know how similar it is until you hear it or read it. It is like almost word for word. You know, a couple of the names are have changed. Um, but man, like, and it's so much older than the Bible, which is yeah. what gets me. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't take away from the Bible stories for me. It's just like, everything's a cycle. Everything comes around, whether it's like, you know. It helps you understand it. Yeah. It helps it helps me understand it for sure. But it, at first it doesn't because at first it shocks you and scares you because you've you've been told that this is the only way. Right. And we're only right. Mm -hmm. Nothing else is right. Everything else is demonic. And then you see that there's, you know, something older that your religion got its, you know. Yeah. Start from. Yeah. It, it, I imagine it could be scary. Like I'm, I'm in a really good place where my mind is open and my heart is open and it doesn't like challenge my faith to hear those kinds of stories but man super interesting it it did years ago though so i try to have grace somewhat yeah but we're we're moving forward so fast like not just us but everybody it's yeah. popular now billy carson is doing his thing and a lot of other people jordan maxwell to and there's many people whose names people don't even know um, and we'll never know that have put in work on this stuff. Um, but it's, uh, so a, a lot more people are up to speed. So I think we're obviously where we come in is like, don't, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but you know, um, don't throw the Bible out. Don't throw Christianity out. Look at it in its deeper context. I mean, we all know and experience it to a degree and and even in these these modes of awakening that we go through it's mm -hmm. even with us with uh, messianic judaism mm -hmm. um you know abandoning christianity um because of easter and christmas and santa claus and all these pagan holidays the pagans they got us yeah it's saturnalia they're worshiping saturn yeah you know, and all of this stuff. So we like ran from it and we want to do the biblical days. But that's was like a trap too, thinking that I was running to something original. Right. Yeah. The Jews. The Jews got it. They got it figured so, out. So we were uh, uh, messianic, uh, uh, messianic Christians. We're still Christians, but um, we didn't keep the um, pagan holidays, you know, because it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist mm -hmm. to figure that out. And it's up to a bunch of debate, so you have to wrestle with that. And a lot of people are waking up to that and having to either find an answer or make up an answer, you know, kind of thing. Um, so that led me to think that, okay, well, I don't do the pagan stuff. I do the real stuff, the Jewish stuff, because they came first. But then when you just go deeper into it and you find out, hold on, the Jews, they stole their stuff too. <laughs> yeah. God, dog, I thought y'all was first. Yeah. I thought y'all made it up. No, they took it too. So it's like, ah. And if I'm in the, I'm in this place of being a truth seeker, um, which came first? Because if you did something before me and I watched you and stole it, I'm a thief. I'm a copycat. Yeah. I, I got it from you and I, I won't give you credit. And it was, we don't we know about that? Um, That's the thing is, is the honor and the credit giving it where it's due once you find out you have to i have to mm -hmm. you don't have to do anything i have to you know we've seen that everybody you can't just put that on everybody if you're walking in the spirit you have to mm -hmm. for sure um it's integrity it's it's the currency of the kingdom um but yeah, you want to see those similarities and also see the differences. The, the church has only taught us to focus on the things that are different. 
And uh, we got good at that. I got good at it. That's how I got good at seeing the things that make us the same. Yeah. Well, just because you ignore something that is a fact, mm -hmm. it doesn't make it not true. Just because yeah. you're not paying attention to it. Might be yeah. easier because you don't have to address it or whatever, but then that creates all these other problems. Yeah. So, yeah, I, uh, I would say, uh, I, yeah, it is taken. Sean says it the best. It's the greatest story ever told and retold and retold. Elo says, I love listening to the truth seekers. Truth seeker. Oh. True seekers. Nice. True seeker and true seeker. <laughs> they used to call me Lady Truth back Lady in the day. Lady Truth in the veil when she was a baby, baby truth. Yeah. Back in the beginnings, the early rap days, going to old little tiny churches mm. in the worst parts of town. Mm. Good times. And the only white folks. What's wrong with that? Nothing. That's why we went. We didn't care. But it was scary. It was a culture shock. It's so funny to say that. I feel like, you know, it's not politically correct. But, yeah, I think there was a reason. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny, that whole whole time. I remember when it was like a revelation, like the way we felt going to the hood. Mm -hmm. Our friends from the hood yeah. felt the same way coming to the country and coming visit us and coming to our house. Mm -hmm. Think, like driving past farms and stuff like and we're like what like nah it's scary out there where y'all live man we that's where they get people out there you know like, what yeah and then we tell them the same thing we're, we're nervous coming to your house but like, what why are you nervous don't be nervous it's like it just yeah. shows you like that so much work has been done in the the racism and civil rights arena but so much more still needs to be done Mm -hmm. um, but this, this is a question here from Holly so do you believe that we are experiencing the shift as people call it um, what would that be like just the awakening is it the same thing or is the yeah, shift like a, something different yeah just a shift in consciousness a shift in the planet um, I think so yeah because um, I, I didn't even know until recently that the pole shift is a literal thing that happens. It sounded kind of wacky to me. And then you look it up and it actually does happen. The poles tilt a little more and a little more. And eventually it's going to be flipped upside down, quite literally. It helps you, that helps you understand the Bible even more. Mm -hmm. About the things being flipped upside down. The yeah. upside down kingdom and the first will be last and the last will be first mm -hmm. and there's not going to be any building standing here left standing and all of this stuff because it's flipped upside down and it goes underwater and all the whatever happens to the beings and the people will they're they're put get put under the earth and they become a part of the eternal life maybe life cycle maybe they become minerals and the soil and Maybe the beauty that maybe they turned into lapis and maybe minerals and the blood and the oil that we're stealing and these cult, these companies that won't give it back. Maybe they're going to give it back and pay with their body and be a part of the Yeah. Be oil for somebody. Yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of craziness. Yeah, I do. I do believe it's happening and more and more people are waking up and realizing that, it's like the movie The Matrix. We've been tricked into believing this matrix. Like, go to work, be miserable, come home, take your antidepressants, and that's just life, and you got to deal with it. But it's so much bigger and more magical, and they didn't want us to know that. They didn't want us to know how much power we had, that we could manifest our own reality, that we don't have to buy into the lie. And mm. I think more and more people are waking up and realizing that, like, there's a lot of unfairness and a lot of evil stuff going on in the world and right under our noses even. Because people I never thought would be into, like, looking up ingredients on the food and things like that are now, like, something changed. And like, oh, I think we are being poisoned. 
maybe we should read the ingredients and maybe we should be more careful about what's in the tap water and yeah it's happening on many different levels but yeah i think that uh i mean all you can do is speak for yourself and then experience it and then no and notice other people experiencing it and and that's totally what's happening so mm -hmm. if one person has an awakening and um their mind and their will and their emotions get transformed and born again into christ consciousness and christ emotions and then more people start having it and maybe you have something to do with it right and then for sure so the planet in itself is a uh, just because everything we went through pressure um does that yeah the shaking and the pressure which we all have gone through collectively and it allowed us to see um true colors of a lot of things um it allowed us to see you know our true colors and what happens when we get cut you know what what uh you know comes out of us what you know do we bleed what is the oil that comes out of us you know is it anoint is it the anointing because that's how you get it is to be shaken and to be pressed and to be trampled and uh and it brings out either something beautiful or something bad yeah and so you know a lot of us you know you have to go through the bad and then it's mixed you know you have you experience beautiful heights of awesome bliss and blissful encounters and angelic and awesomeness but then you experience you know humanity and what this world has to offer and what you thought was real and what you thought mattered and you know the print that you're leaving on people and and then what you know how do you see it do you make excuses for it and most of us do for a period and then you know you realize if that you want to change if you do and how can you because a lot of times when people even make that decision to change they can't they're stuck yeah. and that's why it is this cycle that they can't get out of um and that's why we need help and that's where you know helpers come in and the holy spirit mm -hmm. is uh the helper and our wives are helpers and husbands a helpmate help me i'll send for you to help you mm -hmm. you know and so we need to to acknowledge all the helpers that we got here trying to um you know whatever we're trying to do yeah make sure that we don't get stuck in the pole shift or something i don't know and it's it's cool too because when you first a little bit of awakening happens it's like a ripple effect and it'll go out and go from the things that are immediately around you and then it goes out to the things that are a little bit further and to relationships and to nature and and then even to the heavenly realms and the possibilities of other dimensions and just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, we got a bunch of comments. Uh, Amanda says, absolutely, Aaron, talking about the poisoning thing and people mm -hmm. looking up ingredients and stuff. Yeah. It makes me happy to see more people doing it because, like, for so long... I even was just kind of like, well, it's in everything. There's no point. But I mean, if you know better, you got to do better. And you can, you know, you can try to eliminate it as much as possible. Um, Travelia? Travela? Travelia J says psilocybin is a helper. True, true. Yeah. Yep. It's a lot of things um, are here to help. Yeah. And we don't know. We have more things that are just right here that we uh, we, we take for granted, mm -hmm. you know. Hey, there's Andrea. Oh, yay. Hey, Andrea. Hey. Hope you guys are doing well. I love y'all. Love you. It's cool to see so many people on here. Heather Johnson says, I love you guys. I'm so glad you have found like-minded people. I have felt so alone in this journey. Yeah, I think that's why we fight for it and, and keep doing it because we know how important it is, mm -hmm. you know, because we need it, you know. Yeah. Well, we I say we need it now for sure, but we needed it too. 
that's how you know what to do because it's something that you needed at some point and still need community and friends you know all this stuff those little videos about church and stuff about what church really is and you know that i did it was just like a 12 second viral clip and there's people that it's funny that people read into everything you yeah. know like they read into that one you guys were on drugs i could tell but no you read that you were on drugs while you're watching my video sir yeah like um but they read into the church thing of just saying what the body of christ really is by definition and uh and it's not a building church is not a building it's it's a collective of people um but they'll read into that that we're telling people not to go to church yeah never no oh this is an attack on church try to get people man if you find a good church you find a good thing yeah uh, for sure but if you go to a place where you're accepted and you're loved for who you are and you're not judged and you can be yourself and still be accepted you don't have to be a hypocrite and pretend to be perfect and to pretend to be something um yeah you found a good thing but i feel like you found a rare thing that's why it totally needs to be said yeah you know Church has become, not not all church, but, you know, a lot of it has become more tradition than anything. It's just somewhere you go, you know, out of tradition mm -hmm. once once or twice a week. And some people only go on like Easter and Mother's Day, you know. But relationship has to be so much more than that. So church is is definitely a good thing. But if church is the only thing, there's just so much more to be had. Like us diving in the scriptures when we study for hours at a time and looking up the Greek and the Hebrew and the stories that correlate to it. And it's just so such a beautiful thing to get into your own practice and your own study. Yeah, I mean, we need fellowship for sure. Um, and that's why we do it. That's why we have, you know, our Thursday night, Sunday morning thing. And, yeah. And then we have, you know, friends and stuff around here that we link up with but yeah people need it. if you find a place where you're where you're um not just tolerated but you're celebrated man listen you found a good thing i would never tell somebody not to go to a building but i am saying that's not a church that's yeah. a building the church is the people yeah and uh they tricked us with that mm -hmm. it's so funny reading the comments of people who are like nope but it's still a building the building uh, god forbid gets destroyed our church is gone. Yeah. Never talk to them people, never see them people again. You wasn't a church. You was a business. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, what's up, Josh? See you guys. Tiffany says, I had felt a bit of a spiritual disconnect lately. Definitely, definitely need to get back to my spiritual routines you guys are amazing and i always appreciate you both thank you thank you tiffany you know that's one of the things um you know for me even today because we don't especially for the work we do we don't do it to do it like we're, we're totally led by inspiration mm -hmm. but when you and it's hard when you plan something because you might not be inspired you may be inspired to do something else and or you may wake up and just don't feel like it you know, and God forbid, but that's the truth. Sometimes you don't. I love the days where it's weeks, if not months of like yeah. gung ho. But sometimes it's like, no, it's time to do it, even though you don't feel like it. So mm -hmm. how do you do it? And, um, you know, maybe you got you get out of routine because we know it hits different. Reading the scriptures in the morning, first thing totally changes the the you know, precedent for the day. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you get out of routine. Sometimes we got pressing matters. We got to get to work early. We got to do other things. Um, or even traveling, those routines change up for us when we're oh, doing yeah. stuff on the road. It's just different. Some days we was we try to get into our morning reading and prayer. And then, you know, it's like, hey, we're with other people and we're getting started early and we're doing this. So there's no lounging like we do. Um, yeah. But when you don't feel like it, and I, I feel like I kind of had a little bit of that today. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, how do we get motivated? Sometimes you're just tired and stuff. And we're like, well, we went for a walk. That helps. But just take a take a, 
a moment, you know, and to do the thing that, that, that you know to do and to shift your focus, shift your gaze. Um, and it don't usually, it usually don't take long. It just takes a moment yeah. to just, um, you know, pray and just ask and to shift. And that's why the scripture says to stir yourselves up. Yeah. Stir up the gift that is given to you with the laying on of hands. And there's a, I love that word in the Bible, in, in the Bible. Like I love it in a, you know, metaphysical sense, but also in a practical sense. So many, uh, things to stirring the pot and stirring things up because you're getting energy you're getting you're creating emotion you're putting something in it so like part of the routine and things that do that is the gospel is stories that do that that um invoke a feeling or a cessation or a um memory um that is stirring yourself up you can't like not hear about it and it not stir yourself up. So to figure out what it is, and it can be something that you could do fast, like not fasting, but do really fast, yeah. that can automatically produce a feeling in you, an emotion that in turn you can stir that up and multiply it and and, and really tap back in where you were as if nothing ever happened, like you never fell off. Yeah. People who get off the path for a minute, you know, people who fall off and whatever, you know, they, the enemy is good at making us beat ourselves up and, you know, telling us that all those mean comments are the truth and stuff like yeah, that kind of thing. Um, but you have to, hold on, let me look at these comments I saved. Let me, let me look at these. Just take a minute and just read like, you know, that one guy who's like, we haven't, I want to see that comment that dude was sending that video i know me too i'm just dying to see it dude if you're listening because i don't do you remember his name austin cooper austin send the video man i saw the beginning and i was like oh yeah this is gonna fire me up i'm fired <laughs> up man i'm excited man because even last night you know because we we you know we do things and you know we, we were gaming and stuff and then we lost <laughs> we lost it wasn't our fault and i was mad i was upset <laughs> I was raging with a holy <laughs> anger from God. And uh, and I was like, man, it's probably not a good idea to go to bed like this. Yeah. Like after getting real intense game and it was kind of late. And then, you know, you pulled up that comment from that, that, that video and I just saw the beginning and it just changed the atmosphere for me. Mm-hmm. Like I was still like on edge, but then it's like that and the dude was tearing up yeah, while he was emotion. sharing. I was like, oh, you wow. You could feel it. Yeah. So it's things that uh, are around us immediately. And you may not get those messages like that. And there's times where we don't get them. Um, and, and those don't even mean, you know, they, they, they mean a lot, but they can wear off. Mm-hmm. You have to remember, did you get started in this because of those? Because you want people to comment on you and send you good comments? No, 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 no. Like today, I'm just like, I just got to... Make it about him. Mm-hmm. Got to take a few minutes and just tell him how awesome he is, and breathe, and just sit in the in the sunlight or in the incense, you know. Smoke for a moment, and then and then you automatically like you bring yourself back into alignment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just strange how quickly we forget things. Like mm-hmm. everybody in life is on a journey, and you start down at the bottom, and you are on your way up and it's ups and downs it's it's both yin and yang but the the thing that that I've been getting into to stir me up lately is like when we wanted to buy a house that was our biggest goal our biggest dream and our house really was not safe like if a hurricane came we had to evacuate and then we had a hurricane come and trees fell and praise god they they all laid down the perfect direction so they did not hit the hit the house but like our home wasn't safe and we have pets and so it's hard to evacuate with pets anyway we just really wanted a a safe sturdy stable home and in an area where we can 
you know, participate in community more and go walking and be closer to friends and things like that. And I will read a journal entry that I wrote from before, how miserable I was and how badly I wanted mm. it. And then I'll just walk through this house and it stirs my heart up to such gratitude that not only did God meet us in our manifestation and meet us where we were working towards this goal. Of course, it's him. He helped us get there. But it's just it's just such a beautiful thing that you you control your reality and you attract what you put your intentions to. And even thinking about the no's, the difficult no's, like, no, we can't go out to eat. No, we can't do this. <laughs> no, we can't buy a new stove. Like, it still works. We need to save our money for the house. Like, all of the no's and the little sacrifices, just, it, my heart was just stirred up to such gratitude. And I don't ever want to forget the amazing feeling, like, when we got the keys and and it actually happened yeah, because we got a picture of it. Mm hmm You know? The key is being present, though. Like, in that moment, I was so present with my gratitude. It it makes me tear up just thinking about it. Like, I can go back to that moment because I was present in it. Mm hmm And get energy from it. Yeah. Yeah, that's where that, you know, the memory stuff and the water. and Because it's energy. It's good energy. Mm-hmm. Or it's just energy in general, and it's good there. Bad energy can, you know, give you... It's still energy. It doesn't matter. It still runs, you know, and you do. You could do something with it. Mm -hmm. With the bad energy, it's like, you know, you can want to change, you know. Bad memories, don't want to make them again, you know, so you can change. And, uh, you know, just that immediate gratitude, that's always been... Uh, the thing for me and I just I love seeing it in the Bible too like Jesus is like you know formulaic system almost I feel of like healing yeah you know when he had when he was healing people and all that stuff he was you know there's a there's a one two three process that I found in it that repeats over and over and um and it's something that like I'm not I'm not reading it and then I'm gonna try to do it it was I was already doing it so I saw it mm -hmm. in there you know, and uh, and it's what I do. I was like, oh yeah, now I got to see up. Me and Jesus are kind of like in this way, you know. Yeah. And if He did it, I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna add more. I'm gonna add more stake in it, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna explore it a little bit. But gratitude and welling up a sense of um, thank Thanksgiving, you know, blessing in you, in your body that you know you can summon it and 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 um, do something with it. Versus on the other hand, you know, we talk about the wicked and what they do. They take uh, they take other people's energy. It's the righteous who have, are able to be able to generate their own emotions and energy and do something and create something beautiful with it. And the other hand, they will take energy from others and create for themselves and yeah. not give back. Um, but, yeah, it's such a... There's so many things that it's easy to live in the past, <laughs> you know, well, you bring it into the present. So you're still like in it, but it's, you're steadily creating more, mm -hmm. you know, just with life and living. And, and even like, it's crazy to part of this, the magic of what Christ does in that situation to, to be able to tap into his energy that he does is that he can go into a bad situation and switch it. Yeah. I mean, that's what he does for us, literally, justification, if you will, to make it as just as if I'd never done it, you know, because the energy that was lingering there, the memories there, we have a different relationship with them now, you know, and we talk, you can just apply it to anything, but, you know, go where we go with this, you know, the demons and stuff that tried to kill us and, you know, being possessed by demons, scary Mm -hmm. scary stuff i'm not i'm not downplaying it at all but i don't look at them as enemies anymore yeah there's a there's now it's like oh now i thank god and now it moves me to com to to compassion it moves me to thankfulness um 
in so many different ways to do it though like immediately it's already there and and i still tap into this is like god thank you for saving me like yeah yeah like thanks for taking me out yeah so beautiful and that's it's so funny we try to i'm trying to like give a an example of how I do it and I do, can't even talk about it. That's what I'm talking about. I can't even give the example because I didn't mean to. But I'm trying to tell you, you can go back and just like this. I didn't mean to do that. I wasn't trying to cry. I'm sure that's what actors do or something. <laughs> yeah. Right? Crying on cue or something. But um, there's a lot of energy there. And it was a lot more than I could ever fathom. Yeah. Mm. That's so good. So many different ways to look at it. So he lets us go back to our, the places that, you know, he's, he's very present there in our lives because it's our testimony. But to go to the places where in your mind, he's not connected before you met Christ, what yeah. happened to you? Or when they did that to you, when you lost your innocence, when they lied on you, when you went to jail, where was God there? You know, just the comment, like I was talking about, those guys arguing in the comment section, where was God? Where was God? He's there. It's your ability to gaze in and perceive mm -hmm. where and when. Where's he at? You know? It's not, where is God? He's there. He's, God is everything, always. Yeah. You. W something clouded your vision and you can't see. That's okay. We can go back together. Mm -hmm. This is what Christ does. You can go back and, and relive it and reframe and release. Yeah. And allow that stagnant energy to go somewhere else and you don't carry it you don't carry it that those burdens yeah he's really good at carrying our burdens it's we all try to be not you know most of us just try to be tough and act like we don't need help and and that's not how we're designed like when you're when you feel a pain and a burden that you can't let go of you've got to have that community like we talked about you've got to you've got to be able to get to god and get people to help you if you can't get it for yourself like it's just like the story of the three friends that lowered their friend down to, to be healed like he couldn't get himself in there mm. so they lowered him in and he was able to get his healing yeah it's so important to have community and and even just the knowledge like before i got my healing experience of my trauma i had no idea how connected trauma was to the body and even now thinking about mental um i don't know if it's disorders but like depression and mm -hmm. things like that that people go through and grief it's not just mental like it's physical everything is tied in the physical and to know that and to know you've got to physically get it out of your body before it's going to be gone like yeah, it's there's a lot of knowledge that people can share too on on things like that. Yeah, I, I don't even see depression as a mental disorder anymore, like mm. because it's it's in here somewhere, also. Yeah, something like it's almost you know it's like a crack, like a split in the personality mm -hmm. of where you were whole, and now you're kind of fractured. Yeah. Like something happened to allow something else in from the outside. And a lot you know, of something it. Something not good or whatever. A lot of times it happens when we're children and we're in our formative years. Like, so de depression, when you look at it in the Bible, it's being pushed down. Like your real self is being suppressed mm -hmm. and depressed, pressed down. Pressed down, shaken. Mm -hmm. So at some point you are being your authentic self and somebody told you that was not okay. And that little crack when you, when that first happens, people keep pushing on it 
your whole life until you can figure out where it came from and get it resolved. And then eventually it turns into depression Mm -hmm. because the crack gets so big that it just swallows up everything around you and affects every, every aspect of your life. Yeah. It's, you know, after having, you know, that happened so much, um, in different, um, ways, I would say mostly church stuff related, you know, the trauma and stuff that comes from church of like, keep your questions to yourself, you know, or in school, you know, you've heard me talk about school being made fun of for asking dumb questions Mm -hmm. and come to find out they're great questions. Yeah. Um, and, but they, they, they create this response to where you don't want to ask a question again. It does. Or you don't want to share your truth anymore. Because it was laughed at and they told you God doesn't operate that way. Like going through that and learning it and being pushed down to where you had to pretend yeah. that you didn't have strange questions or pretend that you don't believe that God loves everybody at your church because they preach a sermon against it and whatever. But I think like by knowing that is definitely formed like part of my ministry of like what I actively um try to work to heal in others assuming that it wasn't just me Mm -hmm. because it wasn't that there was a kid in the classroom across the hall asking dumb questions too that you know that they've never asked those questions again i'm still asking those questions you know and um i'm still sharing the dreams and visions that for a while they you know told me god doesn't operate that way that's not god it's the devil and then Okay, I can't tell you my next, the other prophetic dream. I, who do I talk to about these dreams? Yeah. I go to, you know who I, go to the internet. There's all kind of occultists and people who would love to hear my dreams and tell me the interpretations thereof. So it's like, okay, so, because I know that and there's a lot of, if there's, they, they make you feel like it's just you. Yeah. And that's, when I say the enemy with Satan or whatever, like the adversary is his job is to get you by yourself and make you think, this is a deal between us. Yeah. He keeps doing that over and over, whether it's in your head or whether it's whatever. He gets you by yourself and say, yeah, it's just you. Everybody else is normal. You're the only one that believes this. And if you're the only one that believes this, then you're the common denominator. And you're, are you really saying everybody else is wrong and you're the only one that's right? You probably don't want to repeat that. And you find out, hold on, there's a lot of people that believe that. What are you talking about? The more people I talk to and, and, move beyond of me you know sharing it or being scared to share this you find out man it's a whole bunch of people it's probably more people that believe the way that we believe but y'all do a great job at gaslighting yeah that i never want to tell anybody my dreams and visions or what the lord's doing and showing showing me Mm -hmm. or how convenient because they're not either they're repeating other stuff so you see how the system works really quick. And if you know it and you can identify it, then you can, you can lean into it a little bit and come to find it's working miracles. Yeah. Of doing something that simple, just being what you becoming, what you needed because other people were carrying the same trauma, you know, yeah. from church or from, you know, relationships or parents or whatever. Yeah. Even the way they taught us to learn is so, wrong it locks us out of so much because they in school they'll give you questions and tell you there's one right answer to this question and it's like well no i could see this being an answer or this being an answer i I was the one that would argue with the teacher sometimes like because i was a really good student and if i if they would mark something wrong on my paper that i saw the answer could have been something else i would like bring it to their attention Mm -hmm. and depending on their ego and their attitude sometimes they would give me credit and sometimes they would no, there's only one right answer. Yeah. But there's not. There's there's so many in different ways to look at everything, and it should be encouraged, especially in kids, yeah, to ask questions and explore ideas. Yeah. It, just because I'm wrong doesn't mean you're right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I want to respond to this. We talk about ego and different things and belief systems and stuff. And this is kind of a strange comment, but we need to speak to it. Universal truths on YouTube says, if you guys believe in the devil and Satan, I'm not surprised you're not feeling right. So I guess equating believing 
and the devil and Satan. Um, I want to I want to speak to that. I got to yeah, speak to that. Speak to it. Because, you know, even me saying that, I feel I didn't even see that comment, but I felt, oh, you're a little religious. You still believe in the boogeyman, the devil. <laughs> yeah. You still believe in Satan. You, you Satan made you do that. You believe in the devil. You damn right. You damn right. I believe in the devil. You used to dance with him. He's real. You can't even your name, though. Universal truths. How is something like the universal truth got to let you know that if there is a there is a positive that got to be a negative negative. If there is 12 hours of sunlight, there got to be 12 hours of darkness. If there's 12 holy angels around the throne, there's got to be 12 demons, 12 unholy demons. You don't believe you just ain't never seen them. You don't see them. You don't equate it. And maybe you don't like that word. The word means adversary. Mm -hmm. And so this Satan, the adversary being appears in speaks through individuals. Just like talked about people speaking over they didn't even mean that though you know yeah i can you know we have a, a guy who discipled me early on i remember sharing dreams and things god was teaching me um and he's like no nah, that's that's not the lord that's the enemy i don't think that's the lord and it shuts you down but when we see that happening to jesus in the scriptures like satan spoke to jesus through peter mm-hmm the adversary that came against the God's perfect will for the destiny of Christ, of the man Jesus, yeah, spoke to him through his his faithful companion, his best friend. Yeah, the man who went on to become a venerated saint, who has the keys to the kingdom. Yeah, this this. And the thing is, Peter most likely had no idea. Yeah. No idea. And then Jesus is calling him Satan. Satan, get behind me. He said, get behind me, Satan, for you do not mind the things of the spirit or the things of God, but the things of the flesh. And it's like you're trying to talk me out of what God put me here to do. It goes, All of it ties back into the trauma mm-hmm. or the depression. Where does the, the does depression come from, Satan? Yeah. Yeah. You have a authentic self that you're having to suppress and and the Satan pops up from Genesis to Revelation and from whatever holy other holy book or lack thereof, any movie. Mm -hmm. Go watch Star Wars. Throw the Bible away. Cool. Go watch Star Wars and tell me who's Satan in that one. Yeah. Tell me who the bad guy is. Who is the, the one who leaned into the absolutes? Who is the one who kept making the, the wrong decision over and over and over? Then he birthed the reality that was all dark and all evil and all chaos. And he ran off all the good things and all of the innocence. Was, come on. You don't believe it? That's, whatever that is, that's what we mean when we say devil. Yeah. And if that thing became a person, an entity, or an organization. Yeah. That's what we mean when we say Satan and the devil. And it's inside of each and every one of us. Yeah. It even, because he spoke to Jesus directly also when you know, when he was taking him up to the Temple Mount and things like that. And mm-hmm. we have that voice in our head that tells us not to do something or people are going to make fun of you or whatever. Those voices are the adversary. Yeah. They're trying to keep you from being your true self and to, you know, let out the beauty and the gifts that God put in you because you're what afraid of what somebody's going to say or afraid you know people are going to say you're on drugs like (laughs) you can't you can't listen to it but it's there for a reason too because it's such a beautiful thing when you push past Mm -hmm. yeah those voices and you do it anyway like that's the thing the purpose of it is really to me a lot of times to see how bad you want it Mm -hmm. if you just it you know if you just give up at the first whim, a first ripple of a storm, you're yeah. just going to give it up and throw in the towel? Yeah. Yeah, you need resistance. That's how we work out. Yeah. That's how you get big and get muscles and get strong is you put some more resistance on it. Mm-hmm. And so um, 
the scriptures is replete with resistance. Resist the devil. Yeah. So my favorite scripture, you mean, do I believe in the devil? <laughs> my favorite scripture that I needed at my worst, James 4, 7, in which I still need today. So therefore, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Resist him. Yeah. He'll flee. And it worked for Jesus. It worked for the church, those folks in the scriptures, and it works for us and still works today. So, yeah, I believe in the devil and his minions. I believe in darkness. And I, but I believe they have purpose and they have balance and, and that they're all part of the universal truth. Yeah. They're part of the universal truth, which is universal law. And the yin and the yang. Yeah, so yeah, I don't, yeah, I believe in it. Um, I see Preston. Yeah. Preston was... Cameron. Much love, creepy press. Hey there, creepy. <laughs> Alonzo. Yeah. Hey, creepy. <laughs> I, said, I said, Alonzo, don't you just call that kid creepy? What? That's his name. <laughs> hey yeah. there, creepy. How you doing? <laughs> it's like, like that's his first name. Nah. What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well, man. Hope you're still seeking the Lord, bro. I remember you gave me that message a couple months ago telling me about God and your relationship and reading the Bible and feeling the Holy Spirit. Mm. Yeah. Heck yeah. Good good to see you in the chat, man. Any, any uh, comments or anything or questions pop out to you? No. He said, I'm a born-again Christian as of this year. Amen. Good Praise to hear, brother. God. So awesome. No, Richard, of, what's up, man? A lot of good nuggets. People sharing their own comments. No, I don't see any questions really. Richard Vargas, yeah, he was the one I was. I don't know if I told you. I got a message. Um, I did. I think we saved it. He was one of the messages I saved. Yep, Richard was saying uh, that you know people told him to stay away from from you know my stuff or whatever, whether music or podcast or whatever um and and he did for the longest but i guess everything comes full circle and he was found something i guess recently that he really needed or something and it spoke to him and mm -hmm. stuff and I, I wrote you back man and the reason it stands out and i'm bringing it up because i wrote you back and it wouldn't let me uh send it to you it wouldn't let me send the message i wrote you like this <laughs> long thing um just saying that uh you know people need you know there's a certain shock value to you know, the stuff that I, my aesthetic, like, and I know that, right? So I use it to my advantage. Um, but it, it works, it works, it's, it's, um, it has its purpose too. And um, everything isn't for everybody, and especially at a certain time, like, you know, yeah. so you got to respect people that's trying to, you know, it, it kind of, it would do, a, it would do something to me, but like, oh, there's people out there telling people to stay away from me? That's weird. How, what's that conversation sound like? Still, we know that conversation. It's a, it's one of them, and it's cool because now it's a, now it's like, that it puts up this wall or this like, hey man, yeah, resistance thing. And then so later, if you find something that resonates with you, it has to really resonate, because you're like, ah, oh, I'm not supposed to be listening <laughs> to this guy, they, but he sounds. I love, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love it and I hate it too. You know, because sometimes I just want to just reg be regular. I'm just a regular Christian like you guys. No, you're not. In Jesus' name, you're not. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it allows me to reach people that, you know. Won't that, listen to that person. Yeah, they won't. They don't get to go to. They're not going to go to church. They're not looking for it. Yeah. It's like God's looking for them. You know, yeah. So shout out to you, brother. Thank you for that comment. It means the world. And I saved it. Like I said. Um, Stephanie says, uh, what does it mean to you to fear God? I've always had a hard time reasoning with this because God has only made me feel the most beautiful, unconditional love. Thanks. Mm. OK. Just put it, put it, put it this way. It's a it's definitely a, a reverence. And a holy fear and a holy reverence. Put it this way. That God has only allowed you to feel that love and 
and God is only that, right, to you. Um, what if that left? Like, what if you never felt anything? Mm -hmm. Like, God, that God was like, what is the fear of how precious or how delicate it is to want to maintain that? I kind of I, I look at it like that, like just where like there's a there's a holiness and like there's a reverence. Um, Me too. Because that that's what it's talking about. It's not it's but but it is also about being afraid. Like there's that if you ever experience that, like it's um God is in all and through all, and uh, and it's again our ability to see and feel and experience. He's just as much as, you know, in death as he is in life. And uh, it's like, God is only life. He's only light. Well, we, you can't talk about darkness. I got 12 hours. We're g we got to go through every day. I can't, min what's, go what's going on? Yeah. You know, what happens? It's like, is God there? Or is he abandoning us for that? We don't, so we have to be able to, um, do we fear it? Mm -hmm. There's a reverence there. Yeah. I don't know why, um, but just for me the um this analogy always comes up um people rioting like in the streets and stuff and just mad at the government and mad at you know voting we've seen a lot of that happen happening and it's like they hate the government and they hate the police and they hate this stuff and they want to take their anger out well like in reality you should probably take it out on the people that did the thing that brought the injustice right yeah but those people rioting in the streets they're tearing up their neighbor's business, business yeah they're tearing up their neighbor's houses Cars. they're threatening and beating up random people to take their frustration out like how about we all get together and f channel our <laughs> anger and go to the people that we're mad at but you don't because you're afraid I'm not afraid of no, yes, you are. There's a healthy, a healthy, because you'll die. Yeah. You'll die. You love your life too much. So that's a healthy fear. You might not respect him, but you, you fear him. So it, there is a, a mutual respect. Don't come up in here doing that. You do that in your own neighborhood. You don't come. So that analogy of like fearing and the reverence and a healthy fear is like, no, I respect too. And I, I want the good to stay. So I want to walk the straight and narrow because I fear losing it. Yeah. I fear because I know there's things that I can do that, you know, it's not present anymore. And to not have that as a reality in my life is scary. It's very fearful. It's very dark, um, you know. So I, I tie that into there because the scripture tells you that the be the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You should have a healthy fear in reverence. And I really experienced it kayaking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just I the really, awe and wonder. I just kept saying it. How over powerful and over. he is. It's just awesome. And I, 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 it's like I had a deeper revelation on that word. Yeah. Like I'm in awe. You're awesome, God. It's like, no, I am in awe and wonder, but I can die any moment. And yeah. it, 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 but, but it made the awe and wonder go up like so much, mm -hmm. like in a present reality that we didn't know what to do. And you guys were, were <laughs> <laughs> paddle faster. Maybe we can get out. No, no, no. You're not, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm just like, I was kind of happy that you guys, because y'all were worried about me in the back. We're kayaking in a beautiful day in a in this crazy lightning storm, scary came out of nowhere. So it's like a it's like a nine or ten mile or yeah. twelve mile or something trip that we did. So it took all day. Like we put in early in the morning, we we're gonna take out in the evening. And we were halfway down the river, mm -hmm. past the point of taking out, past the point of there being any people or houses or anything. And this storm whips up so fast. It, we, we were having our lunch on the riverbank and um, we put back in and it started sprinkling. It's like, oh, this is kind of nice, you know. And then the lightning came and it, it was incredible. all around us. The fear, like the human fear is like 
there is lightning popping all around. It is so loud. It's echoing across yeah, the whole river and the whole landscape. But it was so beautiful at the same time. Like, it was really like almost seeing God's face. Like, if I die, I die happy. You know, there's nothing you can do. I'm not saying, like, go out and be stupid. But we couldn't do anything but, but paddle through it. And it was the most incredible, beautiful display of God's power through nature. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's to put yourself in uncomfortable and scary situations where you have a place to to shake you and make you feel alive and be thankful kind of thing. And like it for me, it was so amazing because like it was with a lot of the stuff I had been studying Yeah, of like going back into the lightning gods and uh, seeing God in the Old Testament and his thunder and lightning that's around his his throne and even the lightning is an entity in itself and it is an angel and but then like what's happening and it was when I was being like initiated into you know this precipitation act of God of how the angels are traveling back and forth from heaven to earth and how they're taking souls with them you know out of the earth and all this stuff and I'm studying it and then I got to I got to witness it you know um, in, in this way, which was scary. It was. But still, like, awe and wonder and thank you. And, um, <laughs> yeah. So, healthy fear. Yeah. Super healthy fear. So. I remember the most latest revelation of the fear was after my awakening, my re- baptism in the Holy Spirit where I got healed of all that stuff. Um, I I didn't want to do normal things because I was kind of afraid of like quenching the spirit or that, that feeling that was like literally in my physical body. I was afraid of it going away, um, which is, you know, kind of silly, but because it was such an extreme, like I didn't, I didn't want to eat anything but fruit. I didn't want to, you know, like it was very extreme that I didn't want to play video games. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to read the word and listen to worship music every day. And not it's not a bad thing, but I've come to a place where I can have more balance. And I realized that that was a little bit of an unhealthy fear where you're passing on doing things that are healthy because you want to just stay in this one place. Mm-hmm. But I was so afraid of that feeling leaving that God would like remove his hand from me or something. Yeah. And I was trying to tell you that what we were just sharing that it integrates. Yeah. It's the integration process where it's like absorbing to see if you get to keep it kind of thing. Yeah. And you do. Right. Because how can you not? I guess you can. I don't know if if you can have good like bad trauma experiences imbibe in your body. And there's good ones, too, that you can invoke and touch and remember this, you know, kind of thing. And um, and so it goes back to what we were talking about, being able to think about it and to remember and then to conjure and bring up those feelings. Yeah. You know, to when you need them. But there comes a time when you can you know, do that and need them and, and those memories because they're a part of you. Yeah. Um. It don't make it any easier. But it's beautiful when you go through the process of integration and you realize it's not leaving you. It's just more becoming a part of you instead of like like a mantle you're wearing or something. That you get to carry it all the time in all places. Mm-hmm. I want to um, talk about this one. Heather Johnson says, um, she says, I have a question. Um, as I was commenting on my spiritual gifts, and this is wh- why it's hard for me to talk about mediums. Okay. Let's see. Oops. Maybe I saw the first question first. Oh, I thought there was a question about spiritual gifts. Did you see that? Mm-mm, that's the one I had pulled up. Okay, there it is. I'm sorry. Yep, and you are so right, sis. I have always had spiritual gifts, but it was told to me that it was of the devil, and I ignored my gifts until now, and I'm turning 40 next week. Huh. Congratulations. Yeah. 
that's that's awesome that you're finally embracing your gifts and i know that some things that i had to deal with coming to terms with lost time and things like that is everything happens and has a purpose and don't linger on the lost time just go full speed ahead because the past doesn't exist and the future doesn't exist right now is the only thing that exists and so congrats and enjoy the ride and i'd be excited to learn what some of your spiritual gifts are um eli prince says how has your spiritual walk or relationship with jesus changed as you have learned big truths stuff like magic in the bible and gnostic text and so much more um how has your spiritual walk and relationship with jesus or relationship with jesus changed um it makes it more real um I don't know, all of it adds to an aspect of Jesus to me. Mm -hmm. um, it don't it don't take away anymore like it was a there because there's nothing that I needed to protect or, you know, any of that stuff is just, you know, your belief. It doesn't change the feelings or any of the stuff that we're find we, we're all continuing to find out. For most people it takes it, it robs you of it. That when we talk about Satan or whatever, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so um, God, Christ, comes to give you life and life more abundantly. Mm. So, you know, I, I look at the things that I'm learning in contrast with those two polarities. Um, if it's something that can be stolen from me, you know, then it maybe wasn't mine or wasn't true to begin with, that I had to defend it and hold on to a truth um but it's just that's just been my story over a long period of time that i've been able to do that and it it was not easy to get to that place i'll say but how has it changed um for better or for worse or i just i'm able to see god more like closer mm -hmm. um the Bible becomes even more real with everything that we learn. Um, you know, it's just, it, it's a, it integrates, it's the integration, it's a part of like everyday life and just our, it's a part of our spiritual eyes being open to know such things and then to know why. You know, to fathom something and say, okay, why? Why was this hidden from us? And then to keep asking why. Yeah. You know, and um, and to respect the reasons why. You know, come come to a change of, of heart of why, you know, something's hidden. And say, okay, maybe it is a good thing that they hid it. You know, maybe it is a good thing that dad hides the gun from the children. The children are, are mischievous. Dad probably sh should hide the gun. Yeah. Um. You know, because it's not a good idea. Um. And respect that, because there's definitely. You know, power, dunamis power. Those guys were walking in power that are unmatched. I read a comment even, um, I guess yesterday or something, and it was this lady. Who came back and responded to somebody else or whatever, on one of my posts. But she was like, I rebuke you and bind you and curse you in the name of Jesus. Like that was the dude said something that she disagreed with. Uh -huh. And she said that I cast you down right now. And this, this was in her comment. I cast mm. upon judgment upon you in the mighty name. of. So I'm like, I'm glad that she has no idea what the hell she's talking about. Yeah. I'm glad she doesn't know. She thinks she's binding and cursing. Yeah. And, and, and in, a, in a subtle way she is because your words are the first thing that you learn. But I'm glad she doesn't know what the Bible was talking about, about binding and loosing mm -hmm. spirits. And when you put a curse, she'll learn, though. God is the, is the greatest teacher. Life is the greatest teacher because whatever you do comes back 
on you. Yeah. And so, yeah, somebody says that's a curse and that curse is going to bounce back. Like that is the best way to learn. Yeah. That's how Paul learned. That's how we learn. Like through gnosis, through experience. Yeah. Knowledge through experience. What to do and what not to do. And then to count the cost if you want to do it. And when you know that it take, it's going to cost something. Mm-hmm. To, to think about it and weigh it. Do I say this? Do I mention that? Do I drink this? Do I eat that? You know, and to, and to have that power to show self-control. And, uh, and, and then to see those who can't. Who are talking about power that only comes through self-control. But I'm, I can see that you can't control. So it helps me so much more. Like there's a deeper appreciation. And there's not a high horse thing at all. Because I still, I'm, I remain a student. Because I still don't, I don't, I say still don't. There's no way you're ever going to learn. That's the beauty of it. Of how deep it goes. Of what perspective you're reading mm-hmm. um, from. And, and where you are in, in your life as you're studying the scriptures or with Jesus like God becomes what you need when you need it he said that and it's what his you know the name Ahaya means you know I am I become that what you need and so if you need that I'm that and I'll work with you according to your faith yeah Um, but when your faith is stretched and and shifted and um, he'll meet you there too so I look at it you know it's more fun I don't think it uh I don't think it hinders. I mean it could hinder in some ways, but it just makes it more real. I try to I try to maintain the things that are working and just continue to do those more. Like in my belief, in my relationship. So I would never like and it's so funny that we, we bring church stuff with us. Like the things we love in church, we keep that. Yeah. We're not gonna let them take it because we don't go to church. Or whatever, like we're not a part of a church, mm-hmm. and it tell us we're not the church. You know. Yeah. Why? Keep asking why. Yeah. Where did it come from? It's just so amazing. I just, I'm just, my mind is just. I'm in a place where the teacher is now, where the teacher told me not to answer, not to ask stupid questions, and the kids told me that. Where the teachers and the kids are like. We want more questions, True Seeker. Yeah. Ask more. You ask the best questions. You've gotten good at it by podcasting. You ask your guests great questions. Sometimes you cut them off and don't let them <laughs> speak. But you still ask a great question. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like God and the angels and our teachers and stuff, in the spirit, if you will, um, are saying ask. you're asking good questions. Keep it up. Mm-hmm. What about you? Cause Ooh. we talked about it a lot on the last one, how like I was afraid for you in a sense, you know? Yeah. It was different for me because I resisted it for so long. Like I wasn't completely unconvinced, but I had this idea of who Jesus was and what he had done for me. And that was like enough or something. So I just like, you can keep magical Jesus like, other Jesus is good enough for me. The one that shows up in church, you know. What magical? Oh, my magical Jesus? Like he had a rod. <laughs> yeah, magical just wand. Yeah, just the the yeah. deeper meanings of the words and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like to keep it simple has always worked for me in my faith. And so like I never explored all the stuff that you were d- diving deep into. And so I pushed it back for a long time. But then I had an encounter with Christ where he showed up and started telling me all this stuff. Not in the English language, like, you know, me and you are talking, but showed up and revealed to me the healing process that was happening in my body and how it was connected to the chakras and energy fields and frequency. And yeah, he showed me all this magical stuff. And I had this magical encounter with Christ that ever since then it's been uh no looking back for me it just was a total deepener to my relationship with christ to how i can find him and see him in all things in all people in all situations um 
Yeah. So for me, it was like opening the door, mm-hmm. like a deepener. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, that's to be able to see him in more. So that means he's, you know, with you more and really never, never without God. And yeah, I, it helps you see him in more places. It helps mm-hmm. you see where it came from and tracing it back, which is scary. But again, like the p- guy was asking about, um, you know, isn't the Bible taken from, you know, other texts or whatever the case is. And, uh, you know, that what my, what I hang on there is like, you know, Christianity and the Bible is what, is what we have that we're closest to that we know. Mm -hmm. We don't know the the culture and all of that stuff from, from the other stuff. We can learn, you know, but you can't, I don't think you can fully know. Um, but it's still that thing. It's still that. And, uh, you know, it's the child of that, you know, um, no matter how that child got here, like Nako says, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's like, yeah, I think we say sometimes I give thanks for rape because that's how I got here today or something. Yeah. Like, it's like Christianity was stolen. Yeah, but it got to you. You know what I'm saying? And there's a, there's something in it. And I'm not. You know, I'm not vouching for any of that, but I'm thankful that we it's still there and it's not in it, it's bigger than Christianity. God is way bigger. Jesus is bigger mm-hmm. than Christianity is what what we found. And that that's not to knock or, or whatever, because that's a that's a schoolmaster. You know, it's a place to start that a lot of people have something here. Uh, like I want to learn my Native American r- roots. They took that, too. Yeah. But thank God that it's those practices are they're in Christianity. If you are a true son or daughter and you show up and you ask and you do what it says do and you learn and you you'll be taught Mm -hmm. when you're ready. The teacher will appear when the student's ready. The teacher will appear and when you're ready, it doesn't matter. So when I'm ready to learn Sumerian or Egyptian or Akkadian or. Hindu and see how it ties in because there was a time I I was scared to death of all that stuff because mm-hmm. it because it, their truths we, I couldn't coexist with them yeah until I found out that I could and and then deeper than that that it was not just coexisting but that's where our faith comes from yeah all all of it yeah. so if you want to learn what some of this stuff is you kind of if you want to understand the, the New Testament or the Old Testament, you got to see where it, they got it from. And then once you find that, you got to keep asking, where did they get it from? And the Bible tells you that, though. Like, these are, this is what, you know. Yeah. Part of the formula. Yeah, it's so cool. When you really get the get it that God is love. Anywhere you see love, you see him. Anywhere mm-hmm. you see a sacrifice being made for a friend or any story, mm-hmm. love is never going to be Satan. Yep. You know, it's always God. Yep. It's yep. always Christ. <laughs> That's how they're universal, which makes them true. If if Christianity only works for Christians, then, you know, it's not truth. Right. It has to work for whoever works it. And I let you know that it's true that the, that, and the, the scriptures have a lot of precepts on this about, you know, the rain falls upon the just and the unjust. It doesn't matter. Like everybody, you know, nobody's without excuse. There's enough there that you get, you know, what you need when you need it, if you will. Yeah. And then wanting to go back to the earliest. You know, I've always, I, that's still there. It's always, even the messianic thing was like, oh, wow. So before Christmas was Hanukkah, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah. And then, uh, well, let me, that's what I want to learn because I don't want something that came later. I want the original. Yeah. And when we read Genesis and we read, you know, we, our mind goes to Hebrew. And we got so many friends in the Hebrew roots or in the Hebrew living letters and stuff. And it's like, you know, the Hebrew came from Phoenician and Canaanite, right? You know, that's not the earliest letter, you know. Um, it's like the game of telephone. When you retell a story so many times, things get lost and things get changed and left out and added in. And 
Yeah, somebody said that in a comment yesterday, and I was like, I didn't uh. respond, but I was like, you know, it really, really is. That's why it's important to go back to the original, see what happened before. Shoot, and it's some good stuff left out. Yeah. Gives you context. Of all these things we've read biblically that are like, there's no context. So you make up a context, you know, and as we all do it, it's just what we do. You, your mind fills in the gaps. Yeah. So, you know, the Elohim, it was God created man in, in his image and, you know, he created him and let us make man in our image. And like, who is the us? Yeah. Even today, it's funny that people, it's how far this has come, but like still how, you know, primitive, mo you know, Christians still think that's the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Yeah. I would say primitive, but maybe it is. I don't right? Come on, maybe it is. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Who knows? Um, but you, somebody had to tell you that. Mm -hmm. There's no way, no way you read, you know, Genesis. And you're like, oh, that's talking about Jesus. And he's not mentioned yeah. at all there, you know. And the New Testament don't even tell you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was talking about us. They don't say that. Me. Yeah. It, uh, yeah questions that's all it is just getting good at asking questions yep no dumb questions hmm. Eli says both of you are such an inspiration how you two can coexist without strife and be excited with what each other is learning is so awesome it is awesome it's always been awesome <laughs> everything is awesome Thank you, Nicholas. He says, blessed are you. Yes, you are, LOL. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how long we've been on here, but um, and I can't see the computer, but I do know we have to get ready for SEER school here in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, at 7. 7 Central. 7 Central. Today's Thursday. Yes. But see, I thought we had a whole other day. Nope. Yes, yeah. somebody said, uh, I would really like to talk with y'all. Is there a number I can call? So that's what that's where we meet and talk to our community is on SEER mm -hmm. School. Uh, you can go to www.seer.school and sign up there. And we have twice weekly Zoom calls where we meet with our community. Um, it's a beautiful community. There's no judgment. There's a lot of new ideas and information. And we share and other people get to share and that would be a really good place for you to come and seek God together with us and ask some questions and give us your testimonies and yeah that's that's why we have I can say it again I said we said it like on the last two that's why we haven't been doing live streams because you know I used to like the live streams are they're fun right yeah answering questions and stimulate but like Sunday and Thursday have you know been that mm -hmm. and then all that's behind the scenes though and that there's nothing in the public eye but i'm just like you know yeah get my fix if you will uh but you know you don't put nothing out there then nobody knows what you got going on yeah so, we, what else we got going on we got our retreat yeah on the 17th no nope. we leave on the 17th that's what that's where you're messed I up suck. you don't suck you're awesome yeah, our retreat is the 18th through the 20th, so it'll be a week from today, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Mm. So Thursday evening, all day Friday, all day Saturday. And it's going to be in Knoxville, Tennessee. Tickets are still on sale. There's still a limited number of tickets left. And um, you can get, also get those tickets at seer.school. Inspiria. Yeah. Inspiria. Yeah. That's the name of it. We're going to be doing some teaching and some fumigation and doing some sound bowl frequency mm. healing. And it's just going to be an amazing, beautiful time with some beautiful people. It's all relative to the size of the steeple. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun if you guys want to hang out. And um, that's where you can sit down and have a conversation, like in person. We don't get out much. Yeah. Um, but we try to make, make it... Um, try to do quarterly do um retreats it's a yeah. lot of work a lot goes into it um but we're doing this one it'll be up in knoxville and um yeah 
come see us, come hang out. And if not, come join us here at school Thursday nights. Don't matter where where you're at, we do it online on Zoom, so um, everybody can get access to that. So, yep. With that, we say peace. Hope you guys enjoyed. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us and for the comments and the questions and the support and the encouragement. It just means the world to us. Thank you. See you guys later. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.